and stare at it. Oh! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be feeding some of our snakes and showing you the new reptile building that we have. It's the new temporary reptile building. What we have here, this is a 12 by 24 foot shed. Uh, we redid the floors, so we got some nice floors on here. We, well, we got, they're a little dirty right now since we're well, having a tornado in a yeah, store. But. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> filthy right now. But yeah, so um, the whole thing's a mess. But yeah, so we actually uh, redid the floors, painted the walls, painted the ceiling. Uh, put insulation behind that actually. So these are all done up with plywood. We got quarter inch plywood and then insulation and then paint. Uh, we do have some extra wood in here just randomly taking up the entire middle of the floor right now. It's not the best, but um, we don't have anywhere else to put it. Okay? <laughs> Everything is uh, still a work in progress right now. So apologies, bear with us. This is not the final product, you know. This is actually the temporary building for the animals and uh, we just had to do something right now to be able to house them for the winter and to get the snakes out of the house too but also to be able to house all the animals that live outside inside through the winter so ideally what i'm hoping to do within the next year is build a large metal building like i'm hoping ideally to do like a 50 foot metal building and that will meet our needs of having the reptile building and then also partition off where we have the winter housing for a lot of the animals as well. So let's do a quick little run through of who is in here before we start feeding everybody. So over here first we have Rex, the panther chameleon, and then we have some of our little red foots inside right now just because of the storm going on. And then this is Olive, the olive python. So she's uh, the largest snake that we have. She's about 11 feet long. And she's in this awesome big enclosure we got from Toad Branch, we're really happy with. And then on this side, so these are all our Zen habitat setups. So we have TikTok, the ball python, who's the super famous one. Uh, actually, the dodo just recently reshared our video again, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so she's up there, and then down below we have a uh, Cuban boa. Although he, <laughs> I can't really he see. He just, yeah, he just knocked his light out, so we gotta fix that. <laughs> okay. Uh, on this side we have a Florida king snake. He is very, very angry and not friendly. And uh, during the move, these habitats got kind of banged up. You can see in the back right there. So we want to redo all these habitats. Just add that to the list. We got a million things we're doing. Um, and then down here, we have the Aldabras, who are also in for the storm right now, too. Um, and then moving on, we have a, uh, a small Cyclura hanging out down there that was gifted to us. We're not even sure what kind exactly yet. Uh, we have um, Jack's the very rhino. angry rhino iguana. So today we're going to be trying something new as far as feeding goes. So we're going to be giving them rectilinks. And so this is basically a uh, sausage made for reptiles. Okay. <laughs> and no, really, it, I mean, it is a sausage. It's got the, uh, the casein uh, outside to hold it all together. And inside is ground up uh, rabbit and quail and various uh, other things. They make them for different stuff too. So this one is uh, for reptiles, but they do grind up also vegetables, depending on what you're feeding it to. Uh, but yeah, so this is pretty cool. Uh, we've never tried this before, you know, so we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see how the snakes do. Oh, she is interested already, She's interested, huh? so we'll see. But um, this is really good because it gives you a variety of different whole prey just ground up into like basically a sausage. Alright. Nope. Nope. Oh. Oh, she grabbed it. There you go. I feel like this is a really good option too for people that don't like rats. I, I know a lot of people that are like, I love snakes, but I just I could never feed a rat or a mouse. This is perfect. It's not highly processed. We are so uh, careful about what we feed our animals. So uh, this is a really, really good option, and she really likes it. So she's got it halfway down already. So it looks like she, uh, she approves. Okay. Now, um, she's probably the coolest snake that we have, in my opinion. I mean, she's the longest snake, but also just, uh, it's a species you don't often see, our olive pythons. And uh, she's a rescue. We actually got her, I got her all the way back in, I think it was 2014. 
um, from a rescue that was actually shutting down and she had already lived there. So I've had her for a very long time. So we've got a big storm going on right now and uh, we actually had some really strong wind earlier, heavy rain, we got a tornado warning. So it's been a little crazy out there. Um, and the temperatures dropped dramatically. It went from like almost 80 degrees and now out there, it's, it's pretty chilly. It's now. getting low 40s tonight. Yeah, so the temperature fluctuations are pretty crazy up here. Um, but this room is really well insulated. You know, we did a good job on it and- I'm sweating in here. I don't know how you're, I'm, I'm like ready to open the door. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine, but yeah, it's, it's, it's warm in here. That's for sure, which is what these guys need, you know? So we're gonna try one for TikTok the ball python, and uh, ball pythons are very finicky about food. Take it. Where are you gonna stare at it? So they are notoriously finicky, and uh, Reptilinx literally says uh, money back guarantee, except for ball pythons. Because, <laughs> because they're so finicky. That's how they are. <laughs> Um, so we tried piercing the case in a little bit, and we'll see if that makes any difference. Uh, let's see if her face is, I think she's looking on this side. Well, I'm down to leave it and just see what happens. Okay. So we're gonna leave that one there for her and see if she picks it up in a minute. And we're gonna try this one for the Cuban boa. I'm interested. We don't want to disturb her, but uh, she took it. <laughs> okay, I don't want to disturb her, but I do want to show you guys she is eating it. Where's her head? Oh, there it is. So she is indeed eating the Repti Link. <laughs> so the Cuban just finished one. Let's see if uh, she's taking another one. She's looking for the head <laughs> of the sausage. <laughs> so I'm trying to make it move like it's alive. Yep, that's the head, sure. Get it. Nice. <laughs> looking for the head of the sausage. <laughs> that's what she was doing. Alright, so uh, the Cuban took the second one, we're still hoping TikTok uh, wants one, and then now we're going to give another one to Olive. Oh, do not get me. Here, like that. Oh, that's what you just say. You like this. Vicious predator. There you go. She's kind of hiding behind the plant, but she's so pretty. She looks so funny eating a sausage. <laughs> so what's good too is, um, as far as content goes, these are postable without getting flagged. Oh, for... that's a really, really good point. Because yeah. the alligators, all the so, time people ask us if they only eat chicken. Yeah, so I've been flagged. Oh, she got that down so fast, by the way. Oh, wow. That chip's not in there, is it? That yeah, it chip, is. Chip. So yeah, I've been fast. flagged, uh, God, I don't know how many times for like graphic content and things like that when you're feeding whole rats, you know, which is normal and that's what they eat. But apparently in social media, la la man, that's graphic content. And uh, <laughs> it's just so weird. I mean, trust me, I can go on an entire rant about how this doesn't make any sense, but that will not get flagged is my point. <laughs> okay? That's a great point. All right, so I just gave her a third one. <laughs> She's 11 feet and that's one of the smaller ones. She really likes them.
What's cool on her is you see these are her heat pits, but she has them down there on the bottom as well. So when I first got Olive, uh, she was really, really overweight. I mean, they had the best of intentions, you know, they took too good of care of her. And uh, so she was really overweight and you can actually still see she's got these uh, rings on her. Those are like, how would you even describe that? Like fat rings? I don't know the proper term, but I guess you could compare it to like, maybe like stretch marks in like a human. So yeah, she had a lot of that. And uh, so the first, like year I had her, I barely fed her at all, which people are like, what? That's horrible. That's how you get them overweight in the first place and they end up with heart issues, is people try to feed reptiles like they think that they're feeding a mammal, a human. They anthropomorphize, they put their feelings into the animal and they're like, well, I eat every day, so they need to eat every day. It's like, no, no. She only needs to eat once a week, once every other week or something along those lines, depending on how much you feed her and what it is. And the rats, just giving her rats, I mean, that is uh, very fatty. And so that's why these reptilinks are also really good. They're more lean with uh, rabbit and quail and things like that. So I think it's a pretty good alternative and a good mix up in the diet as well. I really like these. Uh, you know, we always feed rats and it's gross, you know. And, <laughs> you know, we always have to, well, we have frozen rats and we thaw them out and then they're just dripping everywhere. And I can't tell you how many times I've had a snake like grab the rat and the tail just flings rat water at me, you know, it's just super gross. So taking these things out, it's a lot more nice, compact and neat, you know. Uh, so seems pretty good. Now the snakes are finicky though. I mean, that's snakes though. If you don't know a lot about snakes, it's very interesting and really makes you wonder how these things ever survive in the wild. <laughs> Uh, so some snakes are strictly olfactory when what I mean by that is they're completely based on the sense of smell as to what is determined as prey or not. So like uh, with cobras, with king cobras, you know, I've worked with those a lot and sometimes king cobras only eat other snakes. So sometimes what we'll do is take a rat because rats are more easily available in captivity than snakes. Now you should always try to feed them snakes when you can. That's what their diet is supposed to be. But anyways, we're not getting those ethics. The point is I know people who have taken a rat and they rub it on another snake, even like your other pet snake, rub it on there and then present it to the cobra and then boom, they immediately nail it because it smells like another snake. Does not matter what it looks like whatsoever, just what it smells like. And so with these guys, you know, TikTok right there, I don't know. Uh, she is one that has been more um, interested in the thermal presence of her prey. So uh, what I'll often do is take food and put it underneath the heat lamp and get it nice and hot. So even if it looks right, it smells right. If it doesn't have the right thermal uh, presence for her, she's not interested in it, you know? So different snakes do different stuff. And then also we're in winter right now too. So uh, some of the snakes don't eat at all through the entire winter, even when it's kept warm in here. So. You never know. Snakes I wonder are weird. if one would be opposed to eating because it couldn't find the head. Like we watched the Cuban boa for a while yeah. looking for like a head, not understanding. It's definitely a learning curve. This is something totally different. I think something like a monitor would probably take this like really easily. Yeah. And we are going to try this with our armadillo, with the coatis. The coatis are going to love these. Look at TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, for those that say that, uh, ball pythons don't climb and they are perfectly happy in like a little tiny box there you go she does climb snakes are just weird you know um i know cases where people have kept certain snakes in captivity and offer them rats and rats and rats and they will not eat them until they starve to death and die and then someone's like have you tried a lizard and then they literally put a lizard in there immediately eats or even rub a lizard on the rat immediately eats you know so they're very finicky, very strange, and I, it really makes you wonder sometimes, like, how do you ever survive in the wild? And then you have things like cotton mouse that are eating, like... Roadkill. <laughs> the frog, that you watched it scrape, like, that yeah. disgusting frog off the side of the road. Yeah, so it, it really varies by different <laughs> species and, you know, what they like, what their preferences are, what they'll eat, what they won't eat. It gets very strange, for sure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and also just for transparency purposes, Reptilinks did uh, send us these and they did offer us an affiliate link. So if you want to buy some, you can use our link. And if you do, it'll give us a kickback that goes to the rescue fund. So if you want to do that, that's awesome. It helps our rescue. And uh, this is our first time trying these products. We always do try them and see whether or not we genuinely like them or not. And we do. They seem pretty awesome. Uh, the snakes seem to like them, and we're gonna be excited to see how the quadis 
like them as well. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see y'all next time.